a stack as a linked list. In general, we would tend to implement a stack um, with an array, probably an array list. Um, an array list is a really nice data structure for a stack, because especially if you think about the top of the stack is the end of the array list. So when we push an element on the stack, we add it to the end of the array list. When we pop an element off the stack, we remove it from the end of the array list. The array list and, and the underlying array are well suited to that because we're always pushing and popping elements at the end of the array. And so there is no need to insert or remove elements within the array. And so we're not shifting and popping stuff around, right? That's where the array is inefficient. Um, so an array list works really well for a stack. And in fact, in the summative lab we'll start on Friday, you're, one of you, you or your partner, will implement um, a stack using the array list class. Okay? But there are, there are times when we don't want to do that, um, when we are going to use a linked list. And what I hope to show you with this example is because the stack methods and the behavior of a stack is simpler than that of a linked list, to implement it using nodes that are linked, it's actually really straightforward. Okay, so the code we're going to write today is significantly simpler than the code we wrote previously to actually do a full-blown linked list. And this diagram kind of shows why that is. Because when we push an element onto our stack, we always add that node at the beginning of the linked list. So whatever first is currently referring to, we know is going to be now the second node in the list. And we can have our new node refer to that and have first refer to our new node. And this is the only case we have to handle because this is the only thing you can do with a stack. It makes it really easy. And when we remove an element, it's always being removed from the front the first, out, the first node in the list. And so we know we can simply update the first instance variable to refer to what was the second node in the list. So that makes the code a lot more straightforward. Um, so let's take a look at it, just so we can see this in, in action. So I've opened up the chapter 16 class notes folder in VS Code. And we're going to look at the linked list stack class first. And I have some code in here. Um, I decided to stick with a instance variable called first. Maybe I should have called it top because that's like, we always talk about the top of the stack. Um, but I stuck with first because that's what we used when we did the linked list class. So I don't know. Um, I wrote the default constructor just to speed things along for us. And at the end, I defined the nested class node just like we had it defined for the linked list. Okay, so we're using the same node class. So that leaves us three methods to implement. Adds an element to the top of the stack, that's push. Removes an element from the top of the stack, that's pop. Checks whether the stack is empty, that's empty. Let's write that one first. Most straightforward. So public boolean, empty. If the stack is empty, we want to return true. So return this.first is equal to null. If this.first is equal to null, it's going to return true, which is correct because that means it's empty. If this.first is not equal to null, it will return false, which is what we want. Throughout this, this unit, I've been modeling this idea of using a, um, a comparison operator in the context of a return statement. Um, this is something that I think you will commonly see. However, I also appreciate that sometimes it's just hard to wrap your head around when is it returning true or false. You can always write this as an if something return true, else return false. Okay? I don't care if it takes four lines instead of one line. The way the Java 
compiler optimizer works, it's going to be just as fast. Um, so don't feel like you have to write it this way, but I, I do think you're going to see this um, when you look at other code elsewhere. So there's our empty method. All right, let's go write the push method. So we're going we're gonna to mirror the regular stack methods. So public void push. Again, we're not going to worry about generics. So we're just going to take one parameter of type object called element. And uh, we need to basically do what's in the picture here. We need to create a new node. We need to initialize that new node's data. We need to set next of the new node to refer to whatever first is currently referring to. And then we need to update first in our stack. Okay. It's really only four things. So let's create a local variable called new node and assign it to reference returned by creating a new node. We'll initialize the data to the element um, that was specified as a parameter. And now we need to link this new node into our list. So new node.next equals this.first. The node that was the first node in the list is now the next node in the list. And there is a new node. The new node is now the first node. And that's it. Because a stack has limited functionality, the benefit is there's only one case to consider. These four lines of code cover all possibilities. Even if the stack is empty, this code works fine. This.first has a value of null, but that's okay. We want the new node not next to the null. So this is all it takes to implement our stack as a linked list. Let's do pop. So pop needs to return a reference to the object, the element. We do still need to support the behaviors of checking our error conditions, right? So if someone invokes pop and the stack is empty, we do need to throw an exception. So if this.empty throw new no such element exception. Just like we would do if we try to remove, um, if we call remove first and the list is empty. Assuming there is actually something in the list, if we look at the picture again here, we need to Remember the value stored in the node's data, because that's the what we need to return. And then we need to basically set the stacks first to reference what was the first node's next node. That's it. So let's remember the data first before we lose track of that. This.first.data, that's the element reference we want to remember. And then this dot first equals this dot first dot next. And we'll return the element. So, looking at our picture here, we made the new node. We need to initialize this instance variable next. And next needs to refer to this node here. How do we get a reference to this node here? Well, 
the value, the reference to this node is what is currently scored, stored in first. Because we haven't changed first yet. So much like when you wrote the linked list, the order really matters, right? So that's why we can say new do.next equals this dot first. Think of that as like the old value, right? The old first node. And then we update this dot first to refer to new node, the new first node. I forgot to give you some code. Um, and so you don't have to copy this. Feel free just to grab this off of my GitHub later. Um, but I did write, and I don't know why I deleted it, um, a little bit of test code that actually makes one of these linked list stacks, pushes Tom, and then Diana, then Harry, and then uses the not empty thing to pop them off each in turn. Um, so I'll run this just so you can we can make sure like it actually works. And we see Harry, Diana, Tom, which is what, what we expected. So once I commit and push, you can just grab this right out of the stock stack demo class if you want. 